time to get classic with some classic Castlevania. The original, the OG, the bearer of the esteemed Wiener Whip. What's up, y'all? It's me, Majority, talking about another guy, another man, Mr. Simon Belmont in Castlevania for the NES. Oh my goodness, I am cruising through these classics. First, the six NES Mega Mans, and now Castlevania. Just don't go expecting me to play the one on the Game Boy anytime soon. Hey, do you like castles? Well, you've come to the right place, I guess, because I'm in one. Yeah, and if you look closely underneath the chandelier, you'll see a button that says subscribe. So go ahead and subscribe, all you castle lovers out there. I am a big fan of Castlevanias, surprisingly. I, you know, I didn't expect to. I'm not big into, like, vampire culture, but, you know, I've played a number of these over the years and actually enjoyed them. I have played the NES one before, but never without save states. Until today, I recently played through the OG Castlevania authentically. Uh, I did it on my Xbox through the Castlevania Anniversary Collection. I, I was very thrilled to do so. The reason that is quite the feat is because the original NES game is balls to the wall hard. It's probably harder than any of the Mega Man games I've played, but it's still quite the endeavor. It sounds simple enough. Simon can move up, down, left, right, jump, whip, and get any sub-weapon from a holy water to a, a, a crucifix. But the thing is, it's got that NES difficulty. Oftentimes, you'll find that the enemies in the game have a bit more mobility than Simon. Simon can be going down the stairs and all of a sudden another guy will jump right into him and you don't have a clear line of attack or you can't really like throw the sub weapon down the hall without moving down the stairs or maybe you accidentally fall off of a platform it happens all the time especially if you're not too comfortable with the controls the two-dimensional Castlevanias tend to feel like that especially the earlier ones and this is where that all started to be honest it's kind of the whole thrill of this experience is really working around Simon's crippled controls. If you can do that, you've actually earned yourself that kind of badge. It's like a rite of passage in a sense. Oh, I did it. I cleared Castlevania without using any save states in one sitting. It's really rewarding when you do. And it's also just a cool game. It's got such a cool presence. I mean, this is a game where you're fighting flying Medusa heads and suits of armor on your way to a boxing match with death or a big giant floating Medusa head or Frankenstein or any other mythological creature. I mean, the whole premise is a fight with Dracula, a resurrected Dracula at that. How much more badass can it be? Not to mention, these boss battles, if you're still learning them, can take you quite a couple tries. And actually, knowledge of Simon's moveset, especially the sub-weapons. I spent a good 30 minutes trying the stage with death. I think I must have been double digits with him and Count Dracula. The rest of the game, fortunately, I was proficient enough in to be able to clear it. But that's not to say it's a small feat. I'm really glad that I played through the OG Castlevania. It, it came down to the wire. I gotta tell you, the stream was so much fun. I have it archived on my sub channel, Teddy Kong Country. And I also streamed it over on twitch.tv slash majority. Thanks to Brian, who gave me a couple pointers. Uh, I do have some tips. I think generally, it's good to use the holy water it's pretty effective against the majority of the enemies in the game, especially in the final boss battle. And another thing I like doing is sort of exploiting the game's jankiness. So yes, the game can be kind of janky to you, where, yeah, you can instantly get knocked off a platform in an inconvenient location, or you might find that 
you know, the power up that you wanted disappeared too quickly before you could get there, but you gotta fight fire with fire. The skeletons throw bones in the air that actually disappear off screen if they're on the top half of the screen. Also, at one point, I got pushed onto a higher platform and was able to circumnavigate an entire segment of the game. It was really awesome. You can make a couple enemies disappear off the screen. And that all comes with the territory. The more that you play, the more proficient you get, the better you'll feel. And fortunately, there is a second loop for you to explore. Also, the Brian strategy that I've got as a takeaway is that the Roman numerals that you get actually allow you to throw that number of your sub weapon. That's huge for the boss battles. And the trick to getting them is to throw your sub weapons at the candles. Apparently, every 10 candles that you throw the sub weapon at will lead to another one of them dropping. So, here's to throwing more boomerangs in the style of the crucifix. Listen, Castlevania may have been done bigger and better, but there is something endearing about this short and sweet classic. Two hours or less? That's the goal. I'll see you there next time. And here's to some more Castlevania. We'll be streaming it, we'll be reviewing it, and we'll be talking about it. I like castles, do you? If so, I'll see you there in the castle. Castlevania, that is.